Welcome back everyone. Today we will be starting out with the second part of this lecture. So we will be starting out with column chromatography procedure or how exactly we carry out column chromatography. Firstly, of course, we have to prepare the column. So mostly the column is comprised of a glass tube with an appropriate stationary phase. So the glass tube will have an appropriate stationary phase inside it. The bottom end of the column is packed with glass wool or cotton wool or an asbestos pad after which the stationary phase is packed. So we understand that um, the stationary phase would go into the column but before that there should be at the narrowest end of the column there should be glass wool or cotton wool or an asbestos pad and after that we are going to put into our stationary phase and after we have done that after packing that column with stationary phase a paper disc is placed on the top to avoid disturbance of the stationary phase because once we are trying to introduce sample or mobile phase if we do not put that paper disc the stationary phase would be disturbed and if that happens that particular disturbance in stationary phase leads to irregular bands of separation so we do not want that and that's why we have to keep that paper disc at the top of the stationary phase and of course there are two type of packing uh, that can be done while you know we are preparing the column of course there is dry packing technique um, in this technique the amount of adsorbent needed is added as fine dry powder into the column and the solvent flows freely through the column until equilibrium is achieved so that's our dry packing technique and of course there is the wet packing technique uh, in this technique the slurry of adsorbent is prepared along with some mobile phase and it is poured into the column and this is regarded as the ideal technique for packaging and of course we have to keep in mind that the column should be properly washed and completely dried before we start using it now we have to move on to our second step that is introduction of the sample so the sample which is the mixture of the component that we want to separate is dissolved in the minimum amount of mobile phase that is suitable to that particular solvent so at one instant of course the sample is introduced into the column which is from the top portion of the column and it is absorbed and through the elution process the individual sample can be isolated from this particular zone the third process or the third step is of course elution technique so through this technique the individual components are separated completely from the column so it's this technique through which the components leave the column the process of elution can be carried out by employing two techniques number one isocratic elution technique and uh, throughout this procedure a solvent of the same polarity or same solvent composition is utilized for example when chloroform is used alone the, that's when we call it isocratic elution technique and then there is also another technique called gradient elution technique and throughout the separation uh, procedure of this gradient elution solvents of gradually increased polarity or increased elution strength are utilized so for example if first we have used benzene then we move on to chloroform from chloroform we move on to ethyl acetate and then again chloroform so using different solvent of increasing polarity or increasing elution strength then we gradually separate out the different components after that of course we have to detect the components in case the mixed mixture that is separated in a column chromatography procedure are colored components then monitoring the progress is simple because you can see you can visually see the colors and you can see how they are being separated in case the compound undergoing separation is colorless then small fractions of the eluent are sequentially collected in tubes that are labeled of course and through TLC that is thin layer chromatography the composition of each fraction is determined with that being said let us look into the uses of column chromatography 
So column chromatography is one of the most uh, versatile methods for purifying and separating both solids and liquid. And the major applications or in the major areas that we see column chromatography being used is to isolate active com constituents, to separate compound mixtures, to remove impurities or carry purification process, carry out purification process, to isolate metabolites from biological fluids, and to estimate drug in drug formulations or crude extracts. So those are the major areas where column chromatography comes into use. So what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of column chromatography? So like any other chromatographic method, it has some pros and cons attached to it. Advantages of column chromatography is that um, column chromatography is advantageous over most other chromatographic technique because it can be used to separate and purify substantial quantities of component from a mixture. So that's one of the biggest advantage of column chromatography. As for disadvantages, we see that the packing of the column requires some technical skill. So whoever is carrying out column chromatography has to have certain amount of technical skill and should be properly trained. Also, the technique is time consuming and tedious, especially for larger sample utilizing gravity column chromatographic technique. So if we are using uh, gravity to separate out the mixture, of course, it's going to take some time and also it's going to be a very tedious process. This also requires large amount of solvent, which can lead to more costs associated to it. It requires constant attention when the experiment is being performed so that's another disadvantage to it and also collection vessels must be frequently changed and solvent should be added continuously at the top of the column at a rate sufficient to cover the um, adsorbent so that makes it um, column chromatography also very um, effort worthy it means it needs a lot of effort when we are carrying out column chromatography Finally, we'll move into the troubleshooting. Of course, like any other chromatographic technique, when carrying out column chromatography, you might run into some problem. And how to solve them or how to figure out a way around them is something we're going to focus here. So for example, you have a problem with pore separation. So no solvent mixture gives effective separation on silica gel. That's what you're facing. So what can be the possible solution? the rf values of some compounds are very similar so they are very difficult to separate out because they are too similar it becomes their separation becomes very difficult and they cannot be distinguished from one another so before you give up on column chromatography you can do one or two things that is number one try alumna tlc plates uh, so if we Try, if you try using alumna TLC plates, you see that the RF values will be different and separation may be better. And also what you can do is that uh, you can talk to your lab supervisor about the other methods of chromatography, chromatography that are available. For example, uh, you can use normal phase, river phase, um, reverse phase, uh, size exclusion, gel uh, technology, ion exchange chromatography, or even partition and um, affinity. So the list goes on. You can always use different methods to figure out the different um, bands. So if you see that the separation is not as good as you have expected it to be with column chromatography, you can of course use different types of column chromatography before you give up. <laughs>